So let's start the class today. So today I'm going to go over homework problems uh, for homework three and I'm going to start handwritten problems first. So problem number two. So in this problem we have a regularized least square problem in the form of Okay, so we need to consider that sum of two norms of multiple uh, vector can be expressed as the two norm of a single vector, okay? So from this, we can change this equation into this kind of form. So basically, this lambda term goes into the second norm. So we can express this term like this. So we, now we get the uh, sum of multiple vectors, two norms of multiple vectors. So this can be expressed as Now that we have this a zeta minus y, so a zeta minus y, and we have second equation of lambda set, lambda root lambda i zeta, so we get root i root lambda i zeta. So we can express this equation into this kind of form. So from this, we can start our um, problem a, which we need to show that a optimal a should be equal to ATA ATY, okay? So we need to show that. But um, it is quite simple if you consider this as a big matrix A and a big matrix B. If this was A and this was just B, our optimal solution could be in just So this kind of format is, uh, should be very familiar to you because we have discussed this multiple times. So we just um, plug in this matrix A into here and matrix B into here. So after doing that, we get So after this simple matrix multiplication, we can get A, T, A plus. Okay, so we show that this optimal solution is equal to this. So someone might say, hey, the transpose of this matrix is supposed to be A of a root lambda i. So where this um, transpose come from? So you should remember that this a is not an integer or a number, it's a matrix. So if you consider like um, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, then this kind of transpose of this whole matrix can be equal to um, 2, 3, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0, 1. So basically, um, oh, maybe four, two, four. Yep. So if you consider like this, then it's basically the frontal part is basically the transpose of A. Okay. And then one, zero, zero, one. So. So we can just write ATA in front of it. A 
T A of a transpose matrix in front of this A. Okay? No. Sorry. Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> so problem number P. This problem, you need to write down the gradient descent algorithm for the given optimization problem. So let's define our g of a theta, j of a theta, as So we need to solve this equation. Uh, we need to use the derivative of this equation, which means D theta. Because we're going to update, so gradient descent algorithm can be written as theta. So in order to get our gradient descent term, then we need to find out this D theta of dj, okay? So since j theta um, is composed of two parts, so let's do this first, okay? So for the first part, uh, we can write as D set, okay. And this term can be written as A set minus Y. So this is provided uh, in the hint, so it should not be any problem. So next we're going to just do the derivative of uh, <coughs> regard to theta for this equation. Then we get d over d theta. Oh, let's first just multiply these equations, then we get a t. Now that we know that this equation is just equal to this equation, just let's do this derivative with regard to theta. Then we get 2 over a t a theta minus 2 a t y. Okay. Okay, now we've done the first term and let's do the second term. So second term derivative. <coughs> So this is quite simple, just you're gonna just write it as T theta of theta transpose theta, which is equal to two set. So now we found what is D J of theta dot derivative of set regard to theta, okay? So this is basically equal to this term plus this term, okay? But you should remember that there is a lambda in front of this second term. So if you write this equation, you get a zeta okay. So this is basically can be plugged into this equation. Okay? then our gradient descent algorithm is just solved. Any questions? Okay. So let's go to problem C. So based on the result of this, okay, Describe the role of regularization term, okay? 
So gradient G can be computed in G projection plus G regularizer, okay? So basically, um, this term here can be represented as G, okay? So if you consider this as a G, then we can um, see that um, this term over here is for the projection, and this term over here can be represented as the regularizer. That's why I just separated the first part and second part because uh, derivative of this term should be equal to G projection and derivative of this should be equal to G of a regularizer. So what does the regularizer do in this, um, this kind of equation? So there's a seta in the, inside of this um, G regularizer term, right? So basically the regularizer, G regularizer, um, tries to keep the value Theta small, okay? So um, this just regularizer term is just to make this theta small enough and goes to zero, okay? So simple. <clears throat> You're gonna just, um, after you calculate the G term, and you can just separate into two parts because we just did before we do the derivative. So the first term is just G of a <clears throat> projection. And the second term can be represented as G regularizer, but because we need to, um, because this term has a theta, and we need to minimize this whole term, then it means that we need to make this theta small enough, which means this regularizer term makes theta go to small number and goes to zero. Um, okay, so let's go move on to problem D. So you need to describe the result of A and B have the same meaning. So basically A um, was this term. And the B, problem B um, resulted in um, this term, right? So we need to show that this A and B um, is just equal, okay? Have the same meaning, I mean. So problem D. So <clears throat> for um, in the when the number of iteration is large enough, we can um, say that theta i plus one um, is similar to theta i, which means the gradient descent will not uh, go further in uh, in a large number of iteration after the large number of iteration. So we can just write as theta of i plus one goes into theta of i minus alpha of a g theta. So this is just a gradient descent algorithm. And if you consider this in the situation where the iteration was large enough so that there's no update on this uh, value theta, then we can just consider this g theta term as zero when this equation satisfies, okay? So G theta, when the above equation satisfies, is just theta of a hat, and which means the G theta of a hat, we can just, there's a G term here, right? Just we derive this, so we can just write two of a t a, theta of a hat minus two a t y, plus lambda of a two theta hat. So this term should go to zero so that the update does not happen after the large number of iteration. So this means it goes to zero. So after, um, this is some simple math, so I'm not gonna just explain, brief, uh, explain it. So you can write this equation into ATA plus lambda I N of zeta is equal to ATY, okay? Then we can, the twos just disappeared because we have um, all two, 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 so we can just, yeah. So from this equation, we can just write theta hat is equal to a t a of uh, lambda i n of uh, inverse a t y, which is basically equal to this equation, okay? So we, just shown that the second, the problem in the B have a same meaning um, to the problem A in the optimal, finding the optimal solution term, a solution perspective, okay? 
So we know that after, um, in order to have, in order us to have some kind of um, optimal solution, then the gradient descent algorithm should not work after such a large number of iterations, which means the term theta should not be updated. So this means that in the theta that we need to find, the g theta term should go to zero. Then we can just derive the equation, which is equal to a. Okay. So the problem two. E should be a coding problem, so I'm going to skip for, uh, for right now. I'm going to return later. So, any questions regarding problem two? Nope, okay. Let's go on a problem four then. So in problem four, we need to show that um, <coughs> we need to show that okay. So this is um, quite simple. So let's first consider the situation where y i is smaller than zero. Then this term, um, this absolute value term, gives us minus yi because yi was smaller than zero, okay? And the max of uh, minus yi and yi gives us minus yi because minus of yi should supposed to be positive number. For, and the second, if yi was bigger or equal to zero, when situation where yi is bigger or equal to zero, then this yi of absolute value is just equal to yi because it is just positive or zero. And the max of uh, minus yi and yi is just equal to yi, okay? So we now show that this term, two terms are equal in any situation of yi, okay? So problem for a should not be any problem. So for the problem, a, B, so this is quite complicated. So in B, um, we got you know, just um, like define a new term Ti. And in, when we define this Ti term, we get, uh, we're going to just give uh, some kind of constraint so that ti is bigger or equal to max of uh, minus yi and yi for all of i, okay? We just define the ti such that ti is bigger or equal to max of uh, minus yi comma yi for all i, okay? So let's define another term. So if there is j, okay, such that max of uh, minus yj and yj is always smaller or equal to max of uh, minus yi and yi for all the i, okay? So we're just defining a new term j that max of uh, minus yj comma yj um, is always smaller or equal to max of uh, minus yi and yi. So we're just defining two new terms, ti and j, okay? So bas this basically means, however, this ba basically means that max of uh, minus yj comma yj is equal to minimum of max of minus yi and yi.
So this is quite um, straightforward, right? So because max over minus yj and yj uh, was smaller or equal to max over minus yi and yi, that means that the minimum of this should be equal to max over minus yj and yj, okay? So if you look at this, we just define that ti is big O equal to max of minus yi and yi. So this gives us so ti was bigger or equal to max of uh, minus yi and yi, right? From this definition. And this, def this comes from here. So we can just look at this. Then we can write an additional term as a max of a minus yj and yj, okay? So we define new ti and j, and we could write this total equation like this. So from this, we can just write ti is big O equal to max of a minus yj and yj, okay? So let's do the minimum. A minim, um, if this means that uh, minimum of ti is equal to max of uh, minus yj and yj, okay? This ti for um, ti is big O or equal to max of a yj and yj. So if ti was like um, to, from zero to 100, and if the minimum of ti should be equal to max of minus yj to yj, right? So we can just write this equation like this. And max of a yj comma yj was equal to minimum of max of a minus yi yi. So this basically means mean minimum of max of a minus yi and yi, okay? So the problem here was to was to show that minus yi, um, well, yeah. So basically we define the t term here so that the problem um, is satisfied. So minimum of ti is equal to minimum of a maximum of minus yi comma yi. So we now show that problem b is satisfied, okay? <coughs> Any questions? Okay. Now let's go to problem 4C. Okay. So for the problem C, uh, we need to show another optimization um, problem equation. So let's define. So T of a L1 norm should be equal to T1 plus T2 plus Tm. Okay, and we just say T is big O equal to max of a minus R comma R. Okay. So it is just exactly the same as like this, okay? Just we're gonna change this yi into r term, okay? <coughs> then this term gives us minimum of t um, is equal to minimum of max of a uh, minus r comma r, okay? And then let's do the L1 norm for each of side, then which gives us minimum of L1 norm is equal to minimum of L1 norm of a max R, R, okay? We're just making the L1 norm inside of these um, inside terms because we know that this T and this max of minus R and R should be, um, should be the same problem here. So, 
So let's find out what these terms mean, okay? So max of a minus r, r. Okay. And this means that it, <coughs> this can be into divided into two, but basically same. Okay. So max of minus r, comma r gives us negative r if r is a um, negative number and gives us r if um, r is a positive number. So we can just write this, but these two equations is basically um, same thing, okay? This L1 norm gives us the absolute value, so it, it, this is um, basically the same, okay? And if we define r is equal to a theta minus b, um, we can easily write a theta minus b, okay? So minimum of t of L1 norm can be equal to minimizing a theta minus b, okay? So the problem C um, is just solved, okay? We just showed that the L1 norm of t is basically equal to minimizing, minimizing the L1 norm of t is basically equal to minimizing a theta minus b, okay? So let's go and move on to problem 4D. So we need to change this the above equation into optimization problem to a linear programming in a matrix form. So <clears throat> we know that the T L1 norm is T1 plus Tm. However, this T1 plus Tm can be represented as zeros and ones here, and set a 1 to set a n, and t1 to tm, okay? This is simple, just we, um, we define set a, but all the set of terms goes into zero, so we, um, this, that doesn't matter. However, there's a one terms, and one terms goes into this t1 to tm, so we can get the same equation. So this term gives us zero, this is just a vector of uh, zeros. So we're gonna just transpose it. And one of a transpose. And there's a theta, and there's a t. So we can write L1 norm of a t. It's just basically equal to this term. Now we have um, some conditions to satisfy, such as a theta, we start from a theta, of a t, a minus a theta minus b is bigger, a small or equal to t, okay? So the first term goes into a theta minus t, b, and the second term goes into minus a theta minus t goes into minus b, okay? And this equation, we can just write a minus i minus a of minus i of a theta t, which is small or equal to b and minus b, okay? So we define the constraint term like this. So the, basically we just change the equation in the problem c into the, this kind of equation. So uh, the, in the question, so can just write minimum of theta t one t subject to this condition. Okay. Any questions regarding problem four? So problem four e was also a coding problem, so I'm gonna discuss it later. Okay, if there's no question, we're gonna start 
for coding problems. So for problem one, um, this is quite simple. So we need to just generate uh, original signal of 200 data points. So this can be just simply done using ones and zeros command in Python, okay? So um, <coughs> the coding problem here is very simple. So with this NumPy ones, we just defined uh, um, a matrix or a vector with ones, okay, with a size of 100 comma 1, which means that we basically defined ones in the form of 1, 1, 1, 1, this is 100, okay, and also in the same term, zeros, we just defined 100 zeros like this, okay. And the next key term is the V stack term, okay? V stack is vertical stacking. So we are stacking the zero ones and zeros. So ones comes first, and after these um, ones are ended, we're gonna just concatenate this vector in the end, end of the, this one, okay? So after the, there are 100 ones, then there are 100 zeros after that, okay? This is just vertical stacking, okay? You know, stack in vertical wise. So we're going to just stack ones first and then zeros, okay? So after we've done that, the original signal should be looking like this, okay? And the second, we need to use the <coughs> Gaussian noise so that we can create some noise to the original noise, original signal, right? So we, are, um, we need to use this rand n term in the Python, and this rand n term is just basically I'm um, sampling a random number from standard normal distribution. So um, by writing equation like this, we're just giving a noise to this original signal X, okay? This shouldn't be any problem, so I'm gonna skip it. And then there's a optimization problem that we need to um, solve. So from lecture note, from the lecture note um, page, 92, I guess. <clears throat> so, the minimization of dx1 one, one norm um, such that x minus x core was defined in this uh, lecture note, page uh, 92. So this is just basically denoising optimization problem, but this can be rewritten as mean of a okay. So this denoising term can be rewritten in this kind of term, okay? So, <clears throat> first we define the variable x hat with cvx dot variables, and our objective is to minimize this term, right? So this is um, basically this uh, cvx norm, it's just L1 norm. L1 norm is um, sum of absolute values of between this x hat 1 to 200 and x to hat 0 to 199. So basically this is just adding up all the x1 minus x0 plus x2 minus x1 and goes into x100 minus 200 minus x199, okay? So basically we're just adding all the numbers from uh, a difference from the neighbor points, okay? 
Now we give the constraint beta term um, as a 1.3. And this, the important, the importance of this beta term was discussed in the lecture, so you should look at that. So we, we define the constraint, which is this term, okay? So we define the constraint like this, okay? And let's so um, by using the CVX dot problem, you can solve uh, the, the optimization problem, okay? By just giving the objective and the constraint to this function. So this might result in like this kind of form. But if you change the beta term, then the then the result can be different from this. So as long as you just um, correctly solve the optimization pro problem, then it should not be any problem, okay? Any questions regarding problem one? MPS 아, 그 어레이로 바꿔준다는 의미입니다. 그러니까 원래 이 X 해시라는 게 나오는데 그걸 값만 추출해서 이제 어레이로 형식으로 만들어져서 밑에서 이제 저, 저희가 그림을 그려야 되지 않습니까? 그래서 이제 어레이로 바꿔서 그림을 그리게 만들겠다라는 것으로 생각하죠. 그거 없이도 플러시 되면 상관없어요. 네, 상관없습니다. 네. So, if there's no question, then we're going to move on to problem 3. So, problem 3 is quite interesting problem because this problem is basically showing that uh, making the um, image panorama is basically equal to the regression task, okay? So for problem um, 3A, so below code is just printing the image. So I'm not going to just cover in this class. So basically, we're going to use the image show term here so that we can show all the image. And this also, these points were given, where these are the matching points between um, image 1 and 2, image 2 and 3, and so on. So after we visualizing, we're visualizing um, on the image itself. So this should not be any problems. This is just simple um, um, plotting the dots on the image. So I'm not going to cover it. So we, we just <coughs> printed the matching points on each image, OK? Now, there is a homography uh, introduced in this kind of homework. But I'm sure that you have already read this term, so I'm going to skip it for now. So let's solve this problem. So perspective homography for image one and two, right? So we just defined phi zero one as a feature matrix and new pose of zero one as a vector that is that has a matching point on the second image. So basically, this um, this phi zero one should be equal to this term, okay? And this new position term should be equal to this theta. Uh, I mean this B, okay? So, so again, this new position 0, 1 should be equal to B, and this phi 0, 1 should be equal to this, okay? So this X1 and Y1 are just coordinates of the matching points, and we have eight matching points in image, okay? So as you can see, there are eight matching points per image. So we need to um, make this Phi matrix so that we have we have covered all the eight matching points. Okay, so this is basically um, simple. So we we use this temp one term so that we can define the first matching points. Okay, so this position one zero comma i. So this i goes into here zero to seven. So we're just defining this term. Okay. So as you can see, um, for each matching point, there's uh, two lines in the phi matrix, right? The first line and second line is from the first matching point. So for each matching point, we, def we need to define two lines for the phi matrix. So this temp1 is basically defining the first two lines of this phi matrix. And as you look at in this um, vector B, um, the matching points goes into first two terms. However, these matching points are on the second image, not the first image. The second image is uh, matching points x1 dash and x y1 dash. 
So basically, the two lines of this match, uh, vector O matrix B is also from one match, first matching point, and the next two lines of the B is from coming from the next matching point. Okay. So from like this, like attempt two, we just define the y1 here, and then <coughs> x1 dash and y1 dash. Okay. And using the append term, which is um, basically just we'll just keep this matrix going. So if you define first two terms, and then we just use the append so that we can define another two terms, okay? So by appending this, we can just define entire phi, um, phi term and new position term, okay? And this will iterate for all the eight matching points so that we can get a matrix so this concatenate uh, thing, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be worried about this. And edge matrix is just changing this phi, we just appended this, right? Phi 0, 1 into a matrix term, okay? And new position is also equal, um, same as array is changing the new position 0, 1 into array, okay? So, <clears throat> so basically we just have answer here, so set uh, set of uh, optimal set should be equal to this kind of equation. So we just defined perspective set is equal to phi zero one of a transpose times phi zero one and inverse of it times phi zero one and transpose it times new position zero one. So basically we defined this B term and phi term in front of this, um, this, this with, the, the, with this four statement. So the rest of things is just simple, just perspex zeta is equal to this one, okay? And then this V stack means, so as you can see here, we need to get um, this kind of matrix, right? However, after solving this perspective zeta term, we can get only zeta one to zeta eight. So basically this the perspective zeta term variable here will return We we'll return zeta one to zeta eight like this. So we need to add um, one at the very end. Okay. So we just add one at the very end, and we're gonna reshape this um, perspective zeta into three by three matrix, so that we can have the same format as this matrix. Okay. So with this um, function of reshaping, we're going to reshape this matrix into three by three matrix. So this three by three matrix have uh, slots like this. So set of ones go to here, set of two, set of three, set of four, set of five, set of six, and set of seven, set of eight, and then one, okay? So we now have this perfect set of matrix like this term, okay? So any question regarding 3D? Nope, okay. And uh, problem 3E is basically the same as problem D in the code wise, it's just you, can, you need to change these position numbers or you need to define a new phi term. So I'm not gonna just cover it, just um, use the code in the problem 3D, just change these variables so that you can, you can get the perspective homography for image two and three. So I'm not gonna cover this 3E. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go on problem number five, okay. So problem 5a says apply error norm regularization to the image by solving that kind of equation. However, um, this answer to this question is directly given in the lecture note page 95. So I'm not gonna go, come cover this. I'm gonna start with problem B, okay? So for the problem 5a, you can just look at the lecture note page 95. So problem 5b, 
Now we need to define new objective function. And the new objective function has this kind of term. So basically the first here was just appending, um, just making the 2D image into a 1D column vector like this. So variable has a just n comma 1. This was just a vector. However, now we just define variable in a matrix term so that we can have, um, we can do, we can maintain that this kind of data is an image, okay? Because image is just 2D, so we can just represent this image into the matrix. So we define a variable in matrix term like this, and our new objective, which is defined like this, um, is basically um, equal to the term above here. So, um, so the equation was like this. <coughs> This is basically equal to L1 norm of x of a 1 to this minus. So the reason why this equation is satisfying is um, I just mentioned for the problem 1. So I'm not going to cover this. <coughs> So we can just write the second term in the objective function like this, okay? And the rest is simple. You just, you just give the objective to the CVX dot problem, and you should have this kind of image, okay? So basically, we are just the above term, above. In the above, we just define a CVX variable so that we just flatten this 2D matrix image into a vector. However, um, we don't want to do that for an image because image is basically a 2D matrix. So we define a variable in the matrix wise and we need to define a new objective so that we can deal with this matrix, okay? So now we define a new objective term like this. Any questions? ね。ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、
is equal to just this large x term, okay? So this large x term has all the, all the variables that we have, which means that we need to fit these points in a non-linear non -linear equation, right? So when we define a non-linear equation, we can define a zeta 0 plus zeta 1 x plus zeta 2 x 2 and so on. So this x term here is just defining this x and constant term here and x2 and so on. So I use to x over fifth, but it is um, it's up to you to how many of the variables you need to use. But since the problem itself is said um, maybe nonlinear, right? Oh, it didn't say any about linear or nonlinear, I guess. So you can just choose whatever um, variable that you need to, you want to use. So I just use till to x over fifth, okay? And this <coughs> y, which is a number from here, y, are given as that, as a b, okay? Now we just for the zeta, which is um, constant in front of these our variables. We just first initialize the zeta terms into ones, okay? We just used all ones for the total, okay? And this number of iteration, these kind of parameters are, are, are just up to you, okay? So we just write this gradient descent term inside the four so that it can uh, iteratively do the gradient descent, okay? And this zeta term, as we define the gradient descent as zeta going to zeta minus alpha over g zeta. So this can be straightforward to you, okay? So after this gradient descent, we can just print our zeta into this kind of term. So we need six zetas because I defined to x over fifth, okay? And with this gradient descent algorithm, we just find the zeta so that we can fit in this kind of uh, equation, nonlinear equation, into the points that we just had. Okay? <clears throat> and this is basically just um, expressing this term here, this equation. So this shouldn't be any problem. So after drawing the lines, we can just get this kind of equation. Okay? So this is quite very. Um, overfitting wise uh, regression because I use too many terms for this simple equation. If I erase this x fifth or x fourth and x over third, then we can just get a simple, simple line like um, this, okay? The how many variables you choose to use uh, uh, may, uh, decides how well your regressor is working on, okay? For non-linear regression. So any questions regarding problem to E? No, no. 사실 <웃음> 경험적으로 정하긴 합니다. 이게 저희가 뭐딱 정해져 있는 수치, 수치는 아니고 경험적으로 보통 정하긴 합니다. 근데 어뭐 딥러닝이든 머신러닝이든 비슷하겠지만 딥러닝에서도 이제 이렇게 이런 비슷한 과정이 있는데 보통 이런 러닝 레이트 같은 경우는 뭐 보통 많이 쓰는 다, 숫자가 있긴 한데 근데 이번 수업에서는 뭐 이런 거는 자유롭게 정하셔도 될것 같습니다. 근데 이걸 이걸 잘못 정해서 뭐 예를 들어 결과가 나쁘게 나왔다 하더라도 이제 코드 상에서 모든 플로우가 맞으면 다 점수를 드리기 때문에 그건 걱정 안 하셔도 될것 같습니다. Next, the last question, problem 4E. So in problem 4E, we need to use CVXPy to find, the, find and plot the linear regression for data points, okay? So data points are given like this, and as we did in problem 2e, we need to define zeta terms, right? <clears throat> However, now we are dealing with linear regression. So linear regression requires only one x term, right? <clears throat> so for e, Okay, 
So we're dealing with linear regression, so we're gonna just make matrix A of with x and x over zero, okay? X over zero, which is basically a constant term, okay? And we have all the, <coughs> all the B value given in front here. So you can just write as here, okay? Now we define theta as a CVX variable, so theta zero and theta one, we have two, right? We define theta <coughs> with this term. And then for problem four, um, we just define the minimization term of So we define the minimization, so <coughs> optimization problem like this. So we define a T, which is a variable from T1 to Tn, okay? And we use the sum squares of T, but I think this kind of, this answer is quite um, different because the sum square is basically sum of squares, okay? But in the problem, <coughs> it was, um, it was just adding up all T1 to Tm. So I think this answer should be changed into norm, L1 norm of T, okay? So that we can just write this, okay? And the constraint term is just basically these kind of two equations, okay? And we, uh, with a CVX problem defined with objective and constraint, we can just solve for the set of values like this. Okay, after getting the theta values of a theta zero and theta one, we just define, we can just define this y equation, y is equal to, okay. Then as you can see in this um, graph, the linear regression have successfully done, okay. <clears throat> so any question about problem 4E? So problem 4E was just simple linear regression, so I, I think there shouldn't be any problem because the problem 2E was much more harder problem. Any questions? Okay then. So this is end of this class and see you next Thursday.